while Wade's Away, the Mules Will Play, live from San Antonio, Texas. It is your Analog Assault Podcast, episode number 83. Let's go. You're listening to Analog Assault, a video game podcast by Mulehorn Gaming. Welcome everybody to the Analog Assault Podcast, live here at PAX South 2020. Lots of games, shenanigans, interviews, but before we get into it, let's go ahead and introduce everyone at the Free For All Roundtable, starting with Nate. I'm Nate Johns, editor and contributor to the website. Uh, Dark Life, editor, community manager, and uh, contributor to the website. Uh, Lupo to the Rescue, uh, affiliate writer, contributor, and guest host of the Analog Assault Podcast. Underdog 10, podcast host, uh, sometimes writer. Uh, I guess that's a thing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it is now. It is now. Um, and yeah, com- uh, community manager. Uh, yours truly, Thaddeus Prime, podcast host. Uh, haven't written in a while, but I'm probably going to just uh, shake the rust off and get some in. I now. heard a rumor that you were going to start, start streaming. Uh, you know, there's a new game out there that has motivated me, so uh, we'll talk about that. Okay. Yeah, uh, Scarecrow21. Uh, Podcast host, community manager. And pseudonym affiliate writer for MewhornGaming.com. Right and on, our guys. videographer. And all yeah. around yeah. Yeah. camera at yes. the conference. If it wasn't for you, half of the interviews would not have gone so smoothly. <laughs> no, don't, don't, forget, guys. I mean, <laughs> don't forget in-house tech nerd as well. Yeah. True, true, <laughs> true. I mean, those developers see that camera and they're like, ooh. Yes. I'll have a conversation with you. <laughs> so please bring that camera over here. Right. I speak geek. What can I say? It's the pheromones I give off. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's it's can you awesome. bottle this up? And sell it. And sell it. Sell it at Macy's for Christmas. It smells like G Fuel. Call it. <laughs> <laughs> Pseudonym on G Fuel. Oh, man. Well, speaking of those interviews, um, let's talk about some of our interviews that we've had that were the ones that were, I guess, say the most impression made on you, or I guess the ones you like the most you can't wait to talk about or talk about and play and write about and write about write about, and write about yeah and a lot of articles definitely going to be popping up on the website over the next couple of days um, I'll jump in first since I was probably one of the first ones to start doing the interviews I think uh, for me it was a surprise at how well a lot of the indie games that were produced this year came out and how varied they were um, say right off the bat two of the hits that I came across would have been Garden Story um, which was the first interview that I did which uh, played a lot like uh, an old school uh, Zelda game right where you took a control of a Concord, a grape, like a little right. grape thing, and it was going through a world where there was rot, you know, taking over and killing fruit and stuff. So you had to kind of traverse the world and get rid of the rot. And so it had a lot of that, you know, very relaxing Zelda feel from, you know, the early days, mm-hmm. mixed with a little bit of the Stardew Valley where you had to collect stuff and then you had to, you know, plant farms and things like that. Um, I think it would be a great entry point for. Uh, kids to get into that old school adventure type game or even to have something like that on a switch where you can just relax like let's say if you travel and you're going like on a train or something like that or you know on a flight it's just a very relaxing game um the other one would have been uh the partisans 1941 which um plays a lot like an XCOM. Mm -hmm. um as much as i'm not a fan of those type of games like the game actually had me hooked that you know its ideas of how it did things. There's no permadeath in it. It has a very linear storyline. You know, you have your um, eight characters in it that you can swap back and forth for have different skills. Uh, they put a lot of stealth elements in it, and the developers went a long way to make it so you can attack situations from multiple angles. You know, like if you decide to knife a guard, not only can you just knife the person, but you can send another guy out there to drag the body away and pull it into the bushes okay. and stuff like okay. that. Mm. Um, it's really nice the way they let you play with the camera perspective. The artwork on it was uh, beautifully well done on the actual game. And it was just one of those games where you kind of get lost in your playtime and actually doing it. Like, you know, when the demo was over, I was like, you know, can I yeah, play can a little I get bit more? more please? Let me get some more off that. And it was uh, please, great please. to do that. Um, I'll let somebody else go. There are so many other ones that I got to get my hands on. Man, I, I would say, um, I think I think for three of us, we're probably going to have the same one. Um, so I'm not going to steal the thunder, 
but uh, I, I will say Doom Troopers was something that was a lot of fun to take a look at. Mm-hmm. Uh, a card game that was based uh, way back, what was it, in the 90s? In the 90s, yeah. And uh, they brought it back to a video game, got a chance to talk to them. And it, it's the artwork is fantastic. It looks it looks neat. It looks polished, um, and it looks like it's a a game that um, has a challenging aspect to it. That's not just place cards on the table and you know turn based fight, turn based fight. It actually feels like a chess match yep. uh, in in the manner of what it was. Um, Hearthstone and some other games like that play like that a little bit, but this had a different feel to it. It felt it felt different. It felt new and it felt good. Uh, so that was probably my uh, most exciting one, and um, I'd say Zombie Army Two, or Zombie Army Four. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, that was a good one too. Yeah, I'm gonna piggyback right off right off with that one. Um, like you said, we're gonna share some of those. So Doom Troopers, uh, Nate, and mm-hmm. you and myself get to play that one, and completely surprised. I mean, I, I've loved playing Gwent in Witcher, and that's a pretty fun card game in itself, but playing this and seeing the artwork from the 90s, seeing it was a talking to James, right? Justin. His name? Justin, see? Killed it again. I am James. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not do the but interview. But are you James? I mean, I, I'm, I mean, you can call me underdog if you want me to. I call you a lot of things, but anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was explaining the history of this, how he took a, a 90s card game that he loved that eventually got vaulted. The owners kind of just stopped doing stuff about it. It's like He approached them like, I want to make your game into a video game. They saw some of, the work he, some of the work that he's done previously, like, yeah, let's do this. Mm. And now they're here, the second packs, the biggest presentation that they've had so far. And I'm watching this beautifully art, artwork game yeah. being played out like a chess match, mm-hmm. more strategic, not just, you know, like I said, put the cards on the table and back and forth, destroy each other. Um, there's lore into it, there's four factions with hundreds of cards, and... Um, things that are going to keep the players coming back once it really get launched gets launched pretty soon. Yeah, and, and I think and even more so, there's there's perks to the game that they the more things that you do with the game, they're willing to put out there. Like talking about you know if we were to continue to uh, invest into it as as MHG, they would put the MHG logo on the back. That's just something for like people uh, to gather around. Like oh hey, I want to support this game. I kind of want my thing on the on the back of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's funny that they could potentially put a T-virus in the game. Um, yeah, I'm going to push that T-virus, not just in my text, but as, I think, as a, an element in the game. And mm. it's almost like a perfect time to, because it's like, like you were talking about Gwent before, and like Gwent is something that you know evolved from, from Witcher. You know, it's a game inside that. Mm-hmm. Um, but card games in and of itself are very uh, very popular right now. You mm-hmm. know, you have Magic, Magic the yeah. game, card game, mm-hmm. you know, so that's been very popular. And your Hearthstones. Uh, Hearthstone. Hearthstone, yeah. So uh, I think they're striking where the iron's hot, and it could hit a, uh, you know, a new player base mm-hmm. right at the right time. Yeah, sure. something else. He also mentioned that he's taking note of how the microtransactions work and how they're going to do something totally different. So I'm really impressed to see how that works out. Yeah, and he's just got so, so much excitement for the game. He does. He does he Honestly, does. it's a very low entry from a PC perspective. I have an older Mac, and it runs on it. We got the beta downloaded and played a couple matches earlier, and it's running pretty well. And we already got feedback on that. Yes. And he said that he basically can lower his install size yep. because of the success on yeah. your yeah. Mac. Nate Johns, yep. number one Good. tester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of, the, moves. one of the big things that I was really excited for, I didn't play it myself, but I watched Thaddeus play it. Uh, try was, to play it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> try La- Last try. Epoch. In, oh, yeah, that, that too. Yeah, Last Epoch is very similar to like a um, Diablo or Path of Exile, which yeah. myself, Lupo, and Dog have been playing uh, quite a bit lately. And <clears throat> when I first started playing like Path of Exile, the the skill tree is massive. There's probably close to a thousand perks uh, nodes you can get through. Obviously, you can't get through all of them, but um, like that was overwhelming. Uh, last epoch, they took that in a sense, but they stuck a smaller, like smaller. If it, let's say if Path of Exile is a forest. Um, Last Epoch took a tree and put it on each of their skills. So say you've got a fireball skill. There is a branching tree uh, off of that with maybe 15, 20 nodes off that, and you can make it whatever you want. And, like, there's not just four or five skills. There's They have 100, I think they said 110 skills that each have their own branching tree. 
uh, five classes to play. Each of those have um, three like subclasses mm -hmm. for like our Destiny yeah, master class players. Master classes, yeah. yeah, for like our Destiny players, that would be like their subclasses. Um, and you can change out stuff. Uh, looked really fun. Don't forget the time travel. Yeah, so like for our Diablo fans, uh, <coughs> Diablo players know like that we have the rifts where you can go and do these challenges or change up stuff. Um, they've got this idea of it's a one world, but you're going through these time rifts and seeing what it is in different eras. Is what mm -hmm. it seemed like. So one cool thing he mentioned is like you can find these uh, crates in one timeline. You can put some of your loot that you've gotten into that crate and then go to a different timeline, find the crate. It will be guarded by these uh, boss guys and stuff. You kill them and you open the crate and it's different loot. It's that loot but is more tailor or tailored to that era's loot. So you can find different qualities of stuff or different just... A way uh, to enhance your weapons. Yeah, yeah, a way to enhance your gear and I stuff. I think it would be interesting if they took that and kind of uh, rolled your dice, like where you can get something yeah. good or something yeah. like that. Or if, like, let's say you pick up something that's a common or a slightly uncommon thing, and you put it in there just to test it out, and, mm -hmm. you know, you get a legendary, or maybe you get just a different variant of, you know, that time period's common stuff. And all centered around their time travel, which is yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. And they were saying that, you know, they were talking about the skill trees they were like oh, I don't know if we can do that I don't know if that if we can manage that but they said the next day forget it we're going to do it yep you know we're going we're going to break down the walls we're going to try to do things that you know that are been in games but do them a different way that makes it unique makes it different and I think the the 100 different skill trees I, I think it, the force is is a great way to explain it Path of Exile whenever Lupo showed me the skill tree I about fell out of my chair <laughs> I didn't want to touch it for the first like two weeks I'm like nope that is too much for me yeah it's information overload but now yep. you break down those skill trees now to be something where I can play how I want to play in this skill tree and make it unique make it my character and that's something that I think a lot of people will like mm-hmm Customizable on top of customization. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Double custom. <laughs> and make farming great. Make things like that great. Makes it um, really good. I mean, speaking of like, see, like skill trees and customization, one, like, one of the one of the folks I got to talk to and and play out uh, was the uh, um, the game Everspace Two. Mm. Uh, so it's uh, um, it's it's a space sim sort of, and so essentially it's it's kind of like an arcadey type game where you're, you're flying your ship and and so how it's evolved into its, its current form it's um it, it's it's gone from kind of just like um getting skills you die you start over and you you, you go on where you it's more of an rpg um setup where you have feats you have armor you have um different weapons that you can equip over time um you can specialize or, or customize for specific missions that you know and you know you, if you die you don't have to you know go back and, and just work your way forward again right. it's, it's yeah. but it still has kind of like a like a souls-ish element to it where okay well you, you you die um but you can work your way back to where they are and, and most of the the stuff that you were carrying that you had in stove is is still there but i mean it it, it was a blast like me and snake were playing it and it's um yeah i mean it's it, it's it I mean, it's 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 probably the most fun I've had with like uh you know like like, a, like an arcade type space shooter. And it's since, gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks fantastic. It was so good. Like imagine like wow. if like Elite Dangerous and Space Invaders had a baby. It would, <laughs> <laughs> like scale that up. It looked so good. It was fun. It was an absolute blast. Like personally, I didn't play a lot of games this uh, this pack, so, but I I did observe a lot, and uh, that was one of the best looking games that I saw here. Was Ever Space Two? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Man, it was so much fun. Hmm. Well, speaking of good-looking games, um, Ghost Runner from 3D Realms, yeah. gorgeous-looking, oh cyberpunk, almost like a first-person view of Genji. Um, That's yeah. exactly what <laughs> yeah. Jumping we were around. sitting there watching you play it, and I was like, this is kind of like a single-player Genji simulator. Well, the voice in that was talking to me sounded like Genji. Oh, did I'm it? like, whoa. This is crazy. <laughs> but you're wall jumping, slicing, doing a little time uh, shifting, and for players who aren't good at jumping, you're dying a lot. And that's part of the game. You die, you kind of start over that checkpoint every single time. Mm -hmm. You got to so, find ways to take out people quickly without getting hit, so you can actually progress the next checkpoint. Yeah. And so what I was, what, yeah. Did you, th did you thoroughly test that? I want to make I sure. Did. That and so he did. And I have the footage. So put on the record there. That it, it's Correct six me times if I'm wrong, room. T. Like, <clears throat> you take one shot and you're dead. Yeah. But everything else is one shot and they die too. Exactly. 
So it's a fast pace, but then you use that time slow to time avoid shift, yeah. bullets and stuff. Jump around them, get them in the back. Mm -hmm. It was it was it was it was a lot of fun to play. I Did mean, you ever yeah. play the Matrix video game on PlayStation Two? Play yeah. no, but I watched. Enter the is it, is it so, yeah, Enter the Matrix? Is it sort of like the, the time should feel like a little bit like that? No, or, or it's anything? almost um, Max Payne from watching. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that way. Okay. yeah. Brief second of pause where you can you know readjust your, readjust your trajectory yeah, exactly. and stuff like that, yeah. and then move out of the way. I think it's funny how many games uh, this year at the con used uh, a time element because one of the other games I was doing was. Uh, Iron Dagger, which is another uh, like a top-down type game, and uh, when you played that, again, it looked almost like a little bit of XCOM, but not much. Like this one, they decided to go a very full story where you had like uh, one rogue, one mage, mm -hmm. you know, one tank, and they used time in a very weird way. Like if you died or like you had to get past something, you would roll the mouse wheel back, and you can recover the last five seconds, and mm -hmm. it actually showed you on the bottom. You know, this is when you got hit, whereas the tank guy can roll the mouse wheel forward and see where they're going to do it. Like, if the person's going to stop or heal, That's so you know, cool. oh, okay, so he's not going to do anything. He's healing. Yeah. Roll the clock back to where I check. Go and attack him now. Rich versus rip touchpad users. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. So, and there was a couple of other games that ended up playing time. Like, you guys were talking about time in that one. And it's like, you just see that seems to be one of the easier elements to... I guess almost bring in more people who would have a harder time playing a little bit of the more difficult um, PC format games because what you were doing, you know, if you don't get the patterns correctly and like your jump patterns, you fall a lot. Which There's we got to see. We got to see. We got to see. Yeah, um, the respawn elements work very well. We appreciate <laughs> you, you know, verifying that for us. I mean, I, I pushed it so hard, my death and respawning it that it crashed the game. Yeah. Once you finally beat the thing, you didn't know Fatal. what to do. It's like. <laughs> You made it too far, yet you're dying too much. You're done. Yeah, you're done. Fatal error. We'll cut you off. <laughs> oh, man. I think there's there's one more thing that kind of was interesting that got to happen this week. And Lupo got a chance to, you know, be a, a voice for Mixer uh, this week. Yeah, that, that was definitely an interesting experience, you know. So um, a few weeks ago, they, re they reached out and said, you know, how many of these partners want to um, sit at the booth and, and kind of just represent Mixer and... Um, Kind of explain to the the general public or people that were interested about what Mixer is um, and uh, answer their questions. And that was uh, yesterday. I did that for about an hour yesterday, and uh, it was it was an eye opening experience. Number one, to see um, how many people are just interested in what's going on with Mixer and um, their genuine curiosities beyond the fact of just saying, is this just a, another Twitch? You know, like is, is it Twitch Light or is it you know the is it the Coke to the Pepsi or the Pepsi to the Coke, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, so so having those those conversations uh, with people was was fun and it was nice to meet other people that didn't know. Like like for me, I feel like Mixer is just super accessible. It's on every Xbox in America. You 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 see it. It's just right there. But people honestly just don't know. So it was nice to have a fresh take as opposed to the people already having assumptions, you know? Mm -hmm. So educating from the ground up as opposed to denying things that uh, people already have, you know, the ideas that people already have. So that was that was really fun. Yeah, I mean, I think that was that was great. The, the stories that you shared with us were, were great uh, things in it. And hopefully that more people will come to Mixer and see, you know, the great content that's there and uh, things like that. Uh, so I guess one more question for everyone. What was your just? Uh, we know the games that you played, but what was your favorite moment about PAX? What what makes you just love PAX? I know for me, it's just being able to see everyone. Uh, I think that's kind of this might be a, yeah. a mundane response, but I think it's true. And getting to see people out of the headset element, you get to see people live and get to have conversations uh, I like with people. Nate, right? I was about to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. we missed Nate out before we go into the closing. Like, wait, wait. Oh, Mr. Johns? <laughs> I'm sorry. You, some, uh, you know, that's all right. you some experience, didn't you? Yeah. You, you, could, you can, uh, you know. Yeah. Don't have it. There's a lot of things I forgot this week, so. That was yeah. uh, Underdog, by the way. Now yeah, Underdog me. 10. <laughs> <laughs> Screw up. So, yeah, outside of uh, Doom Troopers, which was a lot of fun and being able to even get into the beta and talking to the dev for that, a um, couple tabletop things. There was a whole indie showcase for tabletop top games, and I looked at one Gladius, which is some gladiators you know betting on gladiators trying to influence them almost hunger games esque where you're okay. outside of it trying to influence what happens and, see, and win money and um basically get the most money another one mantis falls which is a, they call it a sometimes cooperative game where it's you're either a witness or an assassin to 
um, and but you don't know who the other players are. So you're trying to navigate basically a knight because you saw something, even if you're an assassin, and need to something that like the mafia back in the 1940s wants you to take you out. So they've sent potentially an assassin. You don't know. Um, sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. And just talking to the dev, devs with that, they wanted something that's very cooperative, mostly. Um, so you have to work together, think strategically. You can't just be like, in, you know, in a pandemic, which is a cooperative game, mm -hmm. where you you usually have somebody just kind of take over and do everything. Um, this one, they wanted to have a truly cooperative experience so they can talk to it. And I'm excited to see that, which will be Kickstartering later this year. So I'll hopefully get a copy of that to review and right play on. through right and uh, talk to them. Speaking so. of cooperative, before we also go to um, Underdog's closing <laughs> statement, <Okay. laughs> um, but including you as well, and mm -hmm. uh, you guys also played um, Zombie Army 4. Mm. Yes, even though it was on a PS4 controller, that was uh, that was a little difficult, and us playing <laughs> Switch a lot this week, like, like Crow was saying <laughs> earlier, our, our controls are just all sorts of jacked up, um, but Zombie Army 4 was really fun, um, you know, even though Lupo, or not Lupo, sorry, uh, uh, Thaddeus and I didn't get a chance to make the 15,000 cut. Um, you know, I, I had a higher score than him, but that's okay. He did. He did. Um, I'm a gracious man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was fun. The, the guns felt good. Yes, they um, did. Yeah. The power-ups felt powerful. I love the replay shots. Like, yes. Yeah. You hit like, you hit like a the wild first, shot. The first shot I fired, it's like slow motion. Like, what the? It's oh, this is cool. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. I... I it was it was fun. It was an enjoyable experience, and I, I know it's two player co op. We don't know if it's four player. It is four player, player co op. Okay. Right, they were just doing two player here just to make it easier to get people in and out. But yes, it's four player co op, and up to four player up to four. controls and uh, the feel of Sniper Elite. So you can really yes. tell like they they if not reskin the game because there's a lot of you know elements in it that are very new to uh, mm -hmm. the whole uh, series, but that bullet time, the handling and stuff like that, the way they reward you for uh, special shots or for, you know, like I shot a pallet of uh, things right off the go and mm -hmm. crushed half the people who jumped over the wall. So we were mm -hmm. just in there staring at nothing for a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, is it really slow? And then all of a sudden we got a horde behind, behind us. Behind us, like, us on the oh, other way, shit, right? yeah. you know, the wrong way. And then I watched you shooting the electrical things that were uh, lighting up the wall. So they, mm -hmm. you know, they reward you for... Uh, Going around looking, you know, being using the mechanics, using what's traps. around it and stuff. But I walked into one of the trains and mm -hmm. it was like a weird horror movie doll scene to play in one Ooh. of the trains. Like I, like I walked in, it was like dolls sitting there hanging out. So I was like, I'm in the wrong train. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like a Left 4 Dead meets Sniper Elite with some... Yeah, very that's, yeah, that's, probably, that's probably one of the best ways to I say it. I had a lot of Left 4 Dead vibes from it. I mean, I know this is the fourth game, but like the older ones came yeah, out a long time ago. It's been a while. Yeah, I can't even really recall them much. Yeah, they I kind of feel like the, every, every time they did uh, a Sniper Elite, you would see the the Zombie Army one. Kind yes, of follow it would be afterwards. in line with the, studio, with the production. So, yes, yeah. Yeah. that, that is sense. very true. But yeah, this is the first one I've touched at all, but um, I'm really liking it. Might actually pick it up. Yeah, I right. think it's something that we're, we're looking at. I will say, you know, I do give that it's a hard time. He did save my butt a few times. Uh, I was almost dead. My partner uh, put a bear trap at my feet. <laughs> <laughs> so was there was there friendly fire? I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't check that. Not that I noticed. Not that I noticed, okay. but the but attempt was there. The attempt. Was there. <laughs> <laughs> to see the attempt was there. I'm just testing the game. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know what's going to happen. Crow's going to try to shoot me immediately whenever we launch the game. It's going to happen. <laughs> it, it, it never fails. I will fails find a way to, to take to you kill out. me. Yeah. Well, speaking of experience and touches, uh, tell us about the uh, the ghost in the house. <laughs> Definitely not totally going to the fact that the place that we picked had ghosts in the house. So apparently, Thanks, yes, the Airbnb apparently had a, a, a visitor of a, not a physical form. Yeah, and knocking that, on doors, trying to open doors, scaring the hell out of other dog upstairs. I mean, I, 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 I casually, upstairs. casually just said, you know what, I'm going to walk. I'm just going to ignore the door The door open, door closed. Uh, I'm just going to keep keep walking. Don't, don't just throw there was some butt touching. I don't think that no? was the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had some interesting nights, so who knows what that really was. Oh, boy. Oh, man. When you start you watching anime at 2 in the morning. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> what time did we go to bed last night? Lupo, Dark, and Crow. Yeah, like. we, might have, we might have had an anime, like... Uh, uh, Florida Man was involved in that. Yeah, Florida Man. Florida Man, yeah. Florida. So, yeah, we had an anime um, <laughs> rabbit hole for, like, a good hour or so at, like, 
maybe one or two in the morning. So I didn't that was just the first night. Laugh so loud, yeah. bro. Huh? I heard you laugh. I heard your laugh was uh, pretty uh, intense. Oh, last night. <laughs> yeah. Last night, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know who that was. I was like, who is that? It's, that, a, it's surely Lupo. Crow. No, it's a Lupo. And this morning I heard his crow. I was like, I was crying. I went. I went. I went from. Yeah, yeah. The drunk laugh. I went from full laugh to cry to dead sleep in like three seconds. It was. It was quick. Dogs over there laying on his cot, and we're just busting up laughing, and then just like all sleep. All sleep. No, it's, it's not ten it's like, seconds later, I just hear rap. <laughs> <laughs> Done. And that was still going this morning. Yes. Yeah, I think so I, I got, had almost. So I got narked on, and I woke up. So. <laughs> awesome. Well, it sounds like we had a pretty awesome packs. I'm looking forward to seeing all this media come out um, to share with all you guys and. Uh, um, I guess now we can go to Dawes' uh, closing statement. Yeah, the one that I tried to do earlier that uh, <laughs> was a failure. Um, yeah, what 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 did you enjoy about it? What was your favorite moment? I, I kind of already shared mine. Uh, being able to see everybody. Uh, what's yours? What is what is your takeaway? I can tag on that one. It's always great to see people that you interact with but have not met in person, mm-hmm. meeting them in person. It just it makes that experience so much deeper. Um, you can truly, you know. You can call them friend. You're texting, chatting with them, but or you play it on game chat. But like being in person, it's, it just makes it more real. Absolutely. You know, our team, fellow streamers, other content creators, it's just, it's, it's great. It's great. Mm. But one thing I will add, speaking of Dune Troopers, we were talking with uh, Justin about uh, his story, and he's like Thaddeus. That's such a cool name. I only know one of the Thaddeus. And then he goes, as a matter of fact, there's a Thaddeus in the game, and it's like some kind of power. Thaddeus is palette or something it yeah. changes the game people can't sneak up around you or whatever and it's like mm-hmm. that's awesome so there is a, a mechanic in this game with my name on it it's like you, as a fact, you can have the card I'm like awesome dude so you know just a little small little takeaway that you know these some of these devs are really really cool and uh, I don't know it's neat yeah very nice I'd say for me aside from meeting everybody which was awesome meeting everybody in the house meeting you know a lot of other people from the shed team and other people that i personally follow um like i end up finding uh psycho who mm-hmm. uh, does streaming on here uh, a couple of guys from youtube um who do you know vr comedy stuff it was awesome to be able to chat and stop and talk to them uh having conversations with luca from mixer mm-hmm. was you know amazing luca, to yeah. be able to have you know just in-depth conversations about you know him as a person the platform you know and stuff like that um it was literally just seeing the developers as they responded to how people respond to their games. Mm-hmm. Like for me, that was awesome to see, you know, as a person who had gone to school for that, you know, to see like, especially, you know, talking to the guy with the, the two man team where mm-hmm. it was like the, I, I, I oh, wish Eduardo. I had the, Yeah, Eduardo's adventure. Like you have one dude who hand draws the stuff, loads it into the computer. Like wow. the game was hand drawn and the other dude programs. Like oh, that's wow. that's insane. Yeah, the game was beautiful. You know, talking to um, Jenny when I did the garden story thing, and you know, seeing them light up, seeing them be like, you know, look how many people are laughing, having them take you know the feedback there. You know, you guys gave feedback um, to a, a bunch of developers. I'm sure we did. I'm sure they got tons of feedback going on, and how they handle things like that was probably one of the best experiences for me. That's awesome. Next. Yeah, yeah. I'll echo. I'll echo what everybody else said. You know, um, Pack South is the people packs. You know, it's 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 a little more low key. Uh, things are spaced out a little bit more. There's, there's more room to, to move and and kind of uh, congregate, so you can uh, it, have a conversation with people and, get and connect. Yeah, get per- get personal. However, you want to take that. that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for me personally, like uh, this is my first Pax as a tenured partner. Uh, East, I had just been partnered for maybe. 10 days, oh, two weeks. Mm-hmm. So um, getting to take those opportunities to, to do what I do. Like I want to become a partner to make a difference in, uh, in the industry and to make a difference in other streamers' lives. Uh, and, I, and I feel like that I was actively able to make that impact today. Or at least, you know, my time here with people on the floor. So that was, that was a huge thing for me personally. Um, and just being able, to, being able to see everybody and meet new people and put, put uh, faces and voices to name. Like, for me, something that is weird is he, he, possibly hearing somebody's voice, seeing a picture, and not knowing how the, the words come out, you know? Mm-hmm. So being able to put those <laughs> together is, uh, is something that... I mean, you had a run with these. Datto yesterday. Yes, I did. I, I did get to meet Datto yesterday on the floor. I, I saw him randomly. So I was talking to another, another partner. Um, it was his first pack, so I went out of my way to talk to him. His wife does actually does my graphics. So, 
uh, I was talking to him, and then all of a sudden, like, corner of my eye, so Dad, I was like, "Your Dado, what's up?" So I, I just did that. Like, I'm not, I'm not the, you know. There was a finger point in there for for all the people. Yes, I, I, did, I did, I did, I did finger point. <laughs> you, you can't, you Dado, you, you Dado. <laughs> but like, I'm not, I'm not the type of person to make a big spectacle about things and do all the pictures and everything like that. But I just want to say thank you because like I wouldn't be a content creator without people like Dado and Dr. Luba. Like I know he's on the floor today, and I might try to find him at some point oh, and say hello okay. again. I'm so you gotta those. get a photo yeah, up together. Okay. okay. So we, we might try to do that. Nice. Cool. Yeah, to kind of carry on to that. So, like, one of the things that I really enjoy about about PAX is is finding people that have the same passion to talk to you about what they're involved in, what they're doing. Because I'm I'm a storyteller. I just like finding people and listening to them and and just getting them to talk and and hear what they have to say and kind of package that up and, and kind of help share that. And and you know, PAX is such a Ama- like an amazing forum for that there's you know obviously there's there's tons of folks down in the expo that yeah they've got something to sell and and but for old but for the vast majority of them it's not just it's not just a job um just because the the indie presence at pack south is so yeah. huge so like these are all um the labors of love that they've put you know tons of work into whether it's they've done hand-drawn animations or you know this is a project they've been carrying for years and so to be able to give to, to find those folks and to you know shove a microphone in their face and 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 hear their story and kind of uh, you know take that and, and share it with the community is, is something that I always look forward to. Awesome. Yeah, I'd agree with that. You know, again with uh, meeting everybody in person, first packs this year, so first time meeting all of you guys, which was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, talking to all the different developers, whether it be for tabletop games or for you know the video games, just seeing their passion and how excited they are that people are interested in their game and things that they're working on, um, and just making that connection with them to then maybe follow up and keep promoting their stuff when we like it too. And so yeah, that was probably some of the best stuff. Yeah, me, I mean, food. The, that barbecue. Oh, oh my God. God. I'm so glad you guys, you guys got to try that. I got to try that. I'm so happy yeah. for you guys. <laughs> yeah. They, so, brought, they brought out the meat wagon, if you will. Yes. yes. We literally had a thing called the Barnyard Platter. It was, oh my God, it was amazing. So it fed all the MHG guys. Like a two box ball plate. Still had, like, it, there was a full, like, maybe 20 inch by 10 inch platter of meat and then we had like three or four skillets of other things there's pics on twitter of this are there not yes, yes. So, yes. 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 go check it out and check out the twitter plenty of discords are covering what happened <laughs> with uh <laughs> The foods there, that cream corn, man. Oh, those yes. beans, bro. Beans. The beans. Oh, my God. Potato salad. The all the asparagus, too. I had vegetables. Yeah. He did. Yeah. He, he did. did. He did. He did. He did. <laughs> they had some good asparagus. Yeah. Yeah. I, that was phenomenal food. Yeah. But, yeah, getting to meet, uh, like, meeting Raph for the first time, or Dark Life for the first time, Nate for the first time, uh, ran into... Who else? Uh, Joe. Average, Average Joe. Joe. Yeah. He's one of our community members, and... Did not expect to run into him at all. Did not expect him to be the guy he was. Like, you never yeah, know how think, tall a guy is. Really, like, he didn't too. really know who anybody was. So, like, he saw my partner hoodie and, you know, has my name on the back. He just grabbed me and then it was just like yeah, kind of hanging yeah. out with us for the rest of the weekend. Yeah. So, uh, that was really cool. Rubric with us. And, yep. Yep. You know, Rubric. Definitely yep. a fan of uh, getting to meet Snake Doctor for the first time, too, in person. Like, <laughs> absolutely. Totally. When I heard that he was coming down, I'm like, really? He's flying all the way down from big old white north? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think uh, to see a poet invader too as well. Yeah. Uh, I think that was also really good and seeing some of the shed people. Always good to see them. Uh, any any closing thoughts before we move on? No, right. I, I'll, I'll throw one closing thought out there. Um, one of the weird sentiments that you hear from uh, people on the floor was, "Why isn't there more uh, AAA presence at these?" I don't think PAX needs it, especially this one. I think the like you were saying before, this is more of a you know the people packs, the indie type mm-hmm. packs, and I, I think it should stay that way. You know, for what it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think it definitely. There's a there's a lot of people here. Like I was telling Nate the other day, for what it is that even though there may not be a huge presence of AAA here or big time games here, the people still come. Mm-hmm. So it's always it's always good. So you can uh, you can find us on Twitter. You can find us on uh, Instagram. All that good stuff, all the all the socials, Discord, check us out at MHG, Analog Assault, po- Analog Assault Podcast. Um, when, thank you, I forgot one. And remember, when in doubt, blow it up.